So a little fun fact for you, Oldham Gardens is actually owned by Udell Gardens, or what was called Udell Farms. Oldham County works hard to preserve its rich history. Great Day Live reporter Nyla Spencer caught up with the Kentucky Historical Society to learn more. It's nice to experience everything that Oldham County has to offer, but you can't truly know about an area without reaching back to its roots. So to add some context, we're here with Rebecca Wisniewski of the Kentucky Historical Society. She's going to tell us about the good and the complicated history of Oldham County. So first of all, let's talk about where we are right now. I know you okay. said this was important for us to do the interview right here. Tell me about this yes. area. Yes, so we are sitting right down in the heart of LaGrange, which is the county seat of Oldham County, and we are actually right next to uh, the Oldham County Archives uh, and History Museum. So we're right next to the History Center, so I thought if we're talking about history, we should definitely be sitting right here. It's awesome to start here. So it's Kentucky, so we already know that we love horses, especially yes. thoroughbreds here. Yes. So tell me, what's some of Oldham County's ties to thoroughbreds in Kentucky's history? Oh, it's it goes back a while. So if you go down US 42, which is actually, you can shoot out of here right through LaGrange uh, and follow that trail, you're going to find tons of, of thoroughbred uh, stables. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm talking beautiful stables, beautiful horses, practice tracks for racing. And they're scattered all throughout uh, US 42 through LaGrange all the way up uh, into Prospect. And uh, one that comes to mind historically is Hermitage Farm. There are tons of them, but Hermitage is known uh, for Speaking of Queen Elizabeth with her jubilee, mm -hmm. uh, Queen Elizabeth II actually visited Hermitage Farm on, on a tour of a, a couple thoroughbred horse farms in wow. 1986. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so Oldham County has been contributing to that thoroughbred horse industry for a long time. Really? And so tell me about some individuals that are continuing to make history in this area. Ooh, oh man. The first two that come to mind are Kyra Elsie and Justin Thomas. Now Kyra Elsie uh, is currently the head basketball coach for the women's basketball team at the University of Kentucky. Nice. Uh, she is amazing. She was born here in LaGrange, uh, grew up, played basketball at Oldham County High School, obliterated a ton of our records. Uh, her jersey is retired in that gymnasium. Then she went on to play at Tennessee for Pat Summit, legendary women's basketball coach. Well, basketball coach, period. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, she's continued her career and made her way back to Kentucky. And I believe she's only the second coach to actually be born and raised here in Kentucky and now be coaching the women's team at UK. So she's, she's fascinating. And then Justin Thomas, recent uh, PGA uh, championship winner for 2022. Uh, and he actually grew up in the North Oldham area, went to middle school at North Oldham Middle School before St. Xavier plucked him up and took him to Louisville. Um, but yeah, we claim him. There are a couple of signs around town that mention that he is, this is his hometown. So, so let's get into a little bit of the complicated history. Right. So tell me, who is D.W. Griffith? All right, so D.W. Griffith, who has coined the nickname of being the father of the modern motion picture. He, his, Themes, especially um, one of his most well-known films, Birth of a Nation, uh, is problematic from a historical standpoint and also from a social standpoint. Um, Birth of a Nation focuses on the Ku Klux Klan and really romanticizes that group um, in the early 1900s. Uh, and it's extremely denigrating to the black community. And a lot of people will think, well, it was the time uh, and a lot of people were thinking that way. And the reality is, actually, no. The NAACP at the time was like, this is not an okay film. Um, even some places refused to show it, places like New York. Um, so it was an issue even then. But you've got this gentleman who's got these really problematic themes, but he's introducing groundbreaking film techniques like the close-up and editing techniques that we had never seen before. And it's feature length, even though it's a silent film. I mean, it's shown in the White House. It's the first film to be shown in the White House. And so tell me about the significance of Pee Wee Valley in Oldham County. Pee Wee Valley in Oldham County. So Pee Wee Valley um, is, is a beautiful place, first of all. Uh, we're talking large historic homes, beautiful big trees, uh, long winding driveways. It's very picturesque. And actually, uh, so picturesque that in the early 1900s, Annie Fellows Johnston, uh, who was a writer of children's books, wrote the Little Colonel book series. And Pee Wee Valley was her backdrop. Really? For that. Yeah. So once again, you have this person who is getting on the national stage and is highlighting Oldham County, 
but has some problematic things that are being shown um, and representing the Upland South, uh, which isn't entirely, once again, historically accurate. But Pee Wee Valley is home to a lot of historic homes on the National Historic Site Register, so that's, that's a really cool thing to own as an Oldham Countyan. Interesting. And so tell me, what is Oldham County's ties to the Underground Railroad? Um, a couple of people come to mind when it comes to the Underground Railroad. You have Delia Webster, um, who actually was helping an enslaved family who was living in Oldham County escape. She and a prominent minister were helping them get out, and luckily uh, that family was able to go on and continue to seek their freedom. But Delia and this minister were both arrested. They were arrested, and she was actually put in the state penitentiary, which is located, which at the time was located in Frankfurt. But that's that's one part of the Underground Railroad piece. But then you get into people like Henry Bibb, uh, which is... That's a, what I was going to ask you about. Tell me about him, yeah. Okay, so Henry Bibb was a gentleman who uh, was of mixed race, and he was uh, so born into slavery. And then he sought his freedom, continued to fight, actually was married to a woman in Oldham County and attempted, had some attempts to escape from here, made it all the way to Cincinnati. But soon, soon enough, he got his way all the way up to Canada, actually became an author, a well-known abolitionist, created the first black newspaper in Canada. And he would come back to the states and in the northern states, especially the Detroit area, and talk about um, the abuses that he experienced in the Upland South. Because a lot of times, even today, we think, well, slavery was was really bad in the in the Deep South, but there were our share of enslavers up here that were equally as abusive. So um, not only physically but mentally. So Henry is, you know, ten years after he's writing and speaking, you see more and more hubs on the Underground Railroad pop up, especially along the Ohio River in this Oldham County area, which is really, really cool. So it's great to have him as a, as a representative of Oldham County as well. This is such an interesting um, conversation about the history of Oldham County, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there are people that want to learn more. So if they want to learn more with the Kentucky Historical Society, where is the best place for them to visit? Ooh, okay, so of course going online and visiting our collections uh, at history.ky.gov um, is a great place to start, but also the Explore KY History app is a great thing to download on your phone. You can take virtual tours and find out about more, uh, not only famous, but influential um, Oldham Countyans from the past, and also some of the spaces and the great towns and people who have lived here.